aging is as, uh, something uh, important topic to everyone who is uh, viewing this particular program. So let's jump into the topic. Initially, we did the aging part one in the last series. Let's go into the second topic. Before jumping into the program, can I request all our viewers who are viewing this particular program to kindly subscribe to our channel. So. Uh, uh, Dr. Gopi, today we will look into the part two of the aging process. The topic of discussion is essentially neurotoxins and fillers. That's what we are going to discuss about today. Yes. Now, can you give a brief overview as to how and what exactly are these neurotoxins and neurofillers and how do they work, please? Yeah. So before answering this question, I just want to recap uh, some of the uh, main points I discussed in the last episode that sure. aging is an ongoing inevitable process sure. and uh, there, are, there are a variety of uh, modalities to address this anti-aging uh, of which Botox and fillers are the prime important uh, uh, treatment modality. Okay, so aging as you know, there are uh, the, the there can be different reasons for which uh, this uh, I mean aging occurs. Okay, yeah. number one is as I uh, mentioned earlier, the loss of collagen. One percent of collagen as we advance in our age after twenty years of age. So sure. we'll be losing collagen, we'll be losing elastin and hyaluronic acid. Sure. This is the prime important reason for the appearance of wrinkles. Yeah. And the second reason could be repeated contraction of our muscles mm. during our day-to-day -day life, knowingly yeah. or unknowingly, maybe due to the profession or even otherwise. And third reason could be uh, the gravitational force which acts on our face. Okay. That's why we see a lot of uh, sagging on the eyelids, the cheeks, the jowls, and so on. Okay. Yeah. And as you know, as the <clears throat> orthopedician, you'll be well aware that as we age, we'll be there'll be loss of substance of the cartilage as sure. well as the bone. Yeah. And the fat is also distributed not uniformly as in young age, because in young, the fat distribution is uniform throughout, whereas yeah. as we age, the fat is distributed in pockets. Yeah. So these are the reasons why we develop wrinkles as well as sagging. Sure. Yeah. So these wrinkles, also known as retired, yeah, uh, are the are the prime markers of aging. Sure. As far as uh, cosmetology is concerned. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, and as as well as these reasons can also precipitate sunken cheeks or uh, sagging jowls and so on. Yeah, and this anti-aging measures are going to set the clock behind, say, five to ten years. Mm. Okay, and uh, these Botox and fillers are the milestones of cosmetology, I can say. Okay, these Botox are very simply, uh, in, in simple terms, I can say they are just exotoxins, okay. which uh, block the nerve terminals or the uh, nerve receptors. Okay. okay. And there are certain chemicals which are responsible for muscle contraction, mm. which is not happening there. So the yeah. muscles become relaxed. Okay. So this is the uh, primary action of a Botox. Okay. Say for a filler, on the contrary, uh, we know hyaluronic acid is the uh, is the prime uh, agent of a filler. Okay. Yeah. For years, yeah. for years, even now. Okay. This hyaluronic acid is a substance which is already present in our skin, Absolutely. which we are using as we age. So yeah. we need to supplement this hyaluronic acid, and this mm -hmm. hyaluronic acid is capable of holding thousand times the, uh, I mean, weight of the water molecules in it. Right. Cells. Okay. Say one gram of, uh, uh, say one gram of uh, hyaluronic acid can hold up to six liters of water. Wow. Okay. So, so hyaluronic acid is a, a primary agent which is used in fillers to yeah. supplement the lost hyaluronic acid 
as well as correct the defects of our skin and the soft tissue. Sure. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, uh, after viewing the last program, um, Professor Ravindran, our classmate, yes. he commented stating that aging is a physiological process. Why do you want to reverse aging? That's what he poised a question to us. I think you answered um, uh, in your last program while we were uh, finishing the program. Uh, you mentioned that, yes, of course, aging is a physiological process and it's a natural process. Let's age, but rather, let's age rather, what is the golden word that you use? To age gracefully. To age gracefully. That was a, 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 that gave me a hint and a clue to respond back to him stating that, yes, of course, but rather let's uh, age gracefully. That's what all the methodologies of either you are talking about the uh, homemade methodologies that you are giving suggestions during the last episode and uh, the remedies that you are uh, that we are going to discuss today are all going to point towards that particular direction. Now, okay. Uh, let me let me let me highlight. Yeah. See, how many times do we look at the mirror ourselves? Ah, that is a point. Okay, if you want to okay. age gracefully, then why do you want to look at your okay. mirror? Yeah. So the in the back of our mind, we do not want to age. Right. Okay. 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 Even combing your hair and putting a powder on the face, what people do is to mask of and to course, augment course. your appearance in front. Of course. That will have a positive impact on your work, the workplace, society and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a, once again a nice point actually. Okay. For uh, people who are talking anti-aging and stuff. He was not talking anti-aging. Rather, he was asking what go against the physiology. That's what he was mentioning about. Anyhow. Uh, okay. Now, how do you determine where, who is the ideal candidate for either this uh, uh, neurotoxin that you give or the fillers that you may advocate for as maybe? Yeah. See, uh, the ideal candidate would be someone who is having an indication for a Botox or a filler. See, okay. the, the protocol is if they, he or she should be more than 18 years of age. Okay. Yep. Of good health, okay, of good physical health without okay. any underlying disease, major diseases, say, no right. pregnancy, not a nursing mother, yeah. okay, and preferably non smokers. And they have to be psychologically stable, not having oh. a body dysmorphic disorder or, a, say, a obsessive compulsive disorder. Right, okay. Yeah, I understand that. Now you mentioned specifically about smoking. Uh, people who smoke, um, unfortunately, are one of the categories who develop a lot of wrinkles and stuff like that. If you are going to eliminate uh, uh, people who are smokers from this particular category, then uh, how do you validate yourself in the sense that uh, is it because you are uh, uh, not advocating to them because the results are going to be poor or what is the reason behind it or the, the, uh, the they are not treating the etiology of the wrinkles here of course that's a good question because see the there are two reasons for this one is smoking itself as i mentioned in the last episode smoking is going to reduce the micro circulation in your body sure and this is going to precipitate the wrinkles further. Yeah. Number one. And number yeah. two, if at all they are chronic smokers, we advise yeah. them to stop or hold smoking or avoid smoking for a few days at least before these procedures. Uh, so that right. they will have the anticipated outcome. Right. Okay. And there will not be any bruising or bleeding. Right. Okay. So it is not an absolute contraindication. It, it will be a relative contraindication. It will be a relative contraindication and the two for a period of time until they uh, stop their smoking habits. So how long do you are advocate advising them to stop the smoking habits before you uh, advise regarding or offer this neurotoxins? Because uh, I don't say um, I'll be I'll be successful in if I say don't smoke. But yes. uh, I'll, I'll just uh, advise them um, the facts that we are, we are we are just teachers, we are not preachers. So we cannot sure. say stop smoking. We can just say avoid smoking for a few days if you want a good outcome. That's it. Okay. That's it. And it's okay. up, up to them to decide. 
Right. Okay. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from. Okay. Now, if you are going to select a candidate uh, for offering this particular procedure, either be it fillers or be it uh, the bot uh, the Botox talks, uh, Botox. Uh, what are all the assessments uh, that you would like to do on these kind of patients? You told what are the filtering criteria, but what are the assessments or the pre-procedural steps that you would want to do? See, for any patient, I make a detailed assessment. Okay. okay. Including the medical history, the obstetric history, the drug history, and so on. As we know, okay. as medicals, yeah. we know all these things. Yeah. But uh, mainly, mainly the thing is, See, you have to. Uh, I have. I have to tell them the quality of the fillers which I have, the variety of the Botox or the types of Botox which we uh, advise them, or the types of fillers, and uh, how long the, uh, the, the the longevity of the product, the mm. anticipated outcome. As I already said, the cost of the filler, the side effects of these uh, Botox and fillers, as well as the downtime too. So. We, we, we explain everything in detail and get sure. a informed consent from them. Absolutely. After which, we ask them for a photo documentation. See, it's always important for, for them, for us, even in a legal aspect, to have a photo documentation before and after the procedure. Okay. After which, this these procedures are simple, safe and effective, and it can be done with topical anesthesia. So we apply anesthesia for a period of uh, say 20 to 30 minutes after which we undertake the procedures. All right. Okay. Yeah. And one more thing I wanted to mention is we I okay. also uh, tell them to avoid certain things before not only smoking to avoid these things before <coughs> coming for these procedures say uh, aspirin. Okay. But okay. they have to take a second opinion from their physician at least okay. to 48 hours before this procedure. Okay. And uh, also uh, multivitamins, analgesics, avoid green tea, vitamin E, fish oil, because all these are going to increase the fragility of the blood vessels, leading to more of uh, bruising. Bleeding. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. This is a cosmetic procedure. So if you are going to offer this injection and if bleeding is going to happen, initial disfigurement might be there, which yeah. might be counterproductive okay i understand where you are coming from okay now uh if for example if i am concerned about my wrinkle yeah okay yeah uh, how do you uh, choose like what are the indications that whether i am the suitable candidate for this kind of procedure or a filler kind of procedure uh, so what are the indications uh, wherein uh, you would try and consider these kind of uh, procedures. Yeah. See, first of all, I would appreciate your motivation to de do this procedures for <laughs> anti-aging. Okay. okay. Because I can understand that you are in the pursuit of uh, uh, making your skin or yourself more youthful. Okay. Okay. Which is going to, of course, give a positive impact among the patients which you are encountering or in your uh, societal or communal uh, I mean uh, participation. Sure. Okay. That's one thing. And second thing is, I take into account all your medical history and everything. And if you are a suitable candidate, definitely, then I'll assess you for which are the muscles which are affected. Okay. Oh. It depends depends on because because the treatment is individualized. We do sure. not do A to Z for everyone. So okay. It's individualized. Some people. Mm. So we, we can go into details of those things, but some people just come for Botox. Some people just come for fillers of limited areas. Some okay. people come for a complete facial and neck rejuvenation. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it depends on what muscles are affected and what kind of uh, outcome you're expecting. Right. Okay. Okay. It's, it's not from a, a suggestion from me, I can give also a suggestion, but okay. I, I hear to what the patient needs. Sure. Okay. Yeah. That is important, obviously. Yeah. We need to need, need to know what exactly what they need so that we can satisfy them. Yeah. Okay. So can you elaborate on the different indications yeah. uh, 
of this uh, Botox injections or the fillers uh, yeah. uh, and uh, how to expect the desired outcome. Outcome. Say indications uh, are, um, I just, I, I'll show you. Okay. Yeah. Because there are cosmetic and, uh, I mean, aesthetic and non-aesthetic indications for Botox okay. as well as fillers. So first okay. we will take up a Botox. Yeah. See, the cosmetic indications are, as I said, to relieve or to relax the wrinkles. Sure. Okay. Okay. So the first and prime important is the forehead lines. Okay. Okay. The forehead lines, because this is a marker of aging, and this can give a uh, this the relaxation of this area itself can give you a positive outlook. Okay. 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 So, but we are very careful that we are not doing this in certain professionals like actors, dancers, or singers who needs, I mean, to or teachers <laughs> even, yeah, yeah, who need expression. Okay. Or we do it at the minimal rates. Okay. Okay. That's one thing. A natural outlook. Some people come for a frozen outlook, frozen face. Okay. Frozen <laughs> forehead. Yeah, frozen forehead. They do not want a single wrinkle on their face. Okay. So, okay. so that's why I told you that this depends on the preference of the patient. Okay. Okay. So indications we always divide into upper face, mid and lower face, as well as there are indications for I mean cosmetic enhancement areas. Sure. So the for the upper face, as I said, mainly for the uh, forehead lines. Wrinkles over the periorbital area, which is called the crow's feet. Yeah. Okay. And this is something called the bunny lines. Okay. okay. Bunny lines. So forehead lines, crow's feet, and the bunny lines. These okay. constitute the upper face. Okay. And and uh, this area is also called the glabellar lines, or also called the eleven lines. Can you see the eleven lines? So very okay. common when you when you when you frown like this, you see the eleven lines. Okay. These, these are called the eleven lines or the glabellar okay. lines, uh, which is the first indication for which the Botox was approved. Okay. Okay. Now coming to the uh, mid and the lower face, we also do Botox for these nasolabial folds, the perioral areas, this aging neck, necklace okay. lines. Okay, and so on, and. Uh, Coming to the cosmetic enhancement, say yeah. people come for this is like an advanced Botox okay. indications. So I do for lifting of the lateral eyebrow. It's called a bro lift. Okay. I do for nasal flare. Okay. To reduce the nasal flare. Okay. To elevate the tip of the nose. Okay. To do masset the treatment for masseteric hypertrophy, so that mm -hmm. it will slim the face. And okay. that also helps in TMJ problems and bruxism. Right. Okay. Yeah. And as well as um, what do you call the poply chin? Mm, poply chin. Pebble chin. Oh. Yeah, pebbly chin or a poply chin. So these are the indications for which we do a cosmetic correction or minor enhancement. All right. Okay. These are these are the cosmetic indications of Botox. There okay. are non-cosmetic indications like hyperhidrosis that is increased sweating over the body say mm. uh, commonly i encounter patients for bromhidrosis something called bromhidrosis which is smelly underarms okay oh. yeah, for which botox is a, an, a, an excellent treatment for uh, this bromhidrosis and increased sweating or increased perspiration in the underarms i also okay. do botox for uh, palms the soles, okay, sweating for the palms and soles, which is called palmoplantar hyperhidrosis. Okay. Okay. So these are the areas for which we, uh, this is a non cosmetic indication for Botox. All right. Now, coming to the fillers, the same thing applies. When the lines are deeper, which cannot be corrected by Botox, we have to oh. do a filler. Okay. And in the lower phase, we also do fillers for. This tear trough, the, the 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 depression which is seen just yeah. below your uh, the periorbital area, 
Yeah. The nasal labial fold, yeah. which can be done with a cannula. And uh, we do for uh, lip augmentation. Very yeah. common procedures is lip yeah. augmentation. You know, there yeah. are varieties of shapes which can we can change or make. OK, yeah. even nowadays people come for Russian lift. OK, we can make what? a heart shape. We can make a strawberry shape. <laughs> really? so, on, so, on, so on. Yeah, yeah. We will discuss in detail when we go into that. So uh, the lip augmentation, uh, you can do a chin elongation. OK, chin elongation or prolongation. We can do a jaw filler, which is uh, commonly in Arab countries. We call it as Texas lift, Texas. Lift. OK, OK, so the mandibular lift or the Texas lift or the jaw lift. OK, and, uh, cheek augmentation or the cheek lift. OK, so these are the common uh, indications for fillers on the face. OK, we, uh, sorry, I forgot to tell you about this uh, Botox. We, it's, it can also be done uh, to relieve or relax the platysma band. So ask the patients to say E. And if they see the platysma band, which usually occurs at 40 or 50, we can okay. address this with Botox, which is called a Nefertiti lift. Ah, Nefertiti. Okay. It's named after the Egyptian queen Nefertiti, who had a long neck. Okay. 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 There are uh, certain indications for which uh, fillers are done, uh, even extrafacially. So okay. For the breast augmentation, I have done for buttock augmentation or the gluteal augmentation. I have done for uh, hands, neck, and the decollete areas as well. Right. Okay. Quite a lot of indications. Yes. Okay. In simple uh, terms, uh, uh, just deviating from the topic. Yes. How much yes. of these um, uh, uh, the the lines that are that you are mentioning, or the sagginess that we have been talking about, etc. How much age depreciation does it show in the sense that if i am going to be if i am i am 50 we are all 50 or at this point of time yeah, yeah. Now, if all these uh, uh, lines and stuff like that mm -hmm. how much uh, do these does these lines augment our age and uh, show it to the public in the sense that how much do we uh, 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 forecast yeah, I can understand. see we are, we are we are trying to set the age clock behind yeah. for, a, for a period of five to ten years, as I said, five to uh, ten years at least. OK, okay. but okay. it depends on varied fact, various factors like sure. the patient. Patients should be like uh, they, they should have a positive outlook on the same. OK, Absolutely. yeah. Number two is uh, they should not overdo things. Mm. OK, and number okay. three is uh, depending on the muscle activity, uh, this this Botox and uh, fillers, they are degrade. They, they are degrading day by day, and you will you will the, the, the result usually lasts for only three months for Botox and six months for fillers. So they ah. have to redo it again and again. OK, OK, that's one thing. And the fourth thing would be. Uh, if they take into account the other factors as well as, as I said, the smoking, uh, I mean, hydrating themselves. OK, and uh, taking care of uh, the skin like uh, photo. I mean, protecting the skin from sunlight and yeah. so on. Yeah, OK. All right. OK, now uh, let's uh, for the viewers who are watching this program, they yeah. would like to know as to what exactly you do uh, when they come to you. And after your consultation, you have selected the patient, you have known the indication. They are yeah. going to ask you, OK, this is what I want. This is what I want. So after you have decided on that particular uh, uh, process that you are going to instill on our patient. So yeah. what do you do? What are the various different injection techniques that you are going to follow for both this uh, Botox and also for the fillers? Yeah. So before that, I would say there are, there are anatomical differences between a male and a female. OK, so people just think so I, I also accept that females are more attractive than men. Definitely no doubt at all. This Absolutely. has been documented by Aristotle. Yeah. And the motivation is also more among women than men. 
Mm. But there are anatomical differences which we cosmetologists take into account. Sure. Number one is, as you know, say, I'm talking about the forehead. Yeah. The forehead is broad in men, whereas yeah. it is narrow in women. Sure. We have a, a high, I mean, uh, the hairline is high. Mm. Mm. Okay, or recessive. We call it yeah. a recessive hairline, whereas it is a low set hairline in females. Okay. Taking into account the eyebrows, we have mm. a straight eyebrows, whereas mm. they have a rounded or arched eyebrows. Sure. See, these are all the fa these are features given by God. Okay. Okay. So okay. Th this is a real miracle from God. Okay. Okay. And say the nose. We have a broad nose with broad base, whereas they have pinched nose with even the tip is elevated in a female. Ah. Yeah. We have sunken cheeks, whereas in females they have rounded, elevated cheeks. Mm -hmm. okay. We have narrow lips, whereas the females will have a fuller lips. Okay. Full lips. Yeah. And we have a square chin, whereas they have a rounded chin. Mm. Even the jaw, which is uh, uh, the gony angle, the, the, uh, there is an angle, the mandibular angle. So this is even that is uh, different in a male and a female. So sure. we take into account all these things before mm. starting a treatment. Okay. Okay. Number one. Number two is uh, th there are set protocols for Botox and fillers. They, okay. Uh, we we take into account the muscle hyperactivity. So for, okay. for some people, the glabular activity will be more. For some okay. people, the forehead lines activity, the frontal is, we say, this activity will be more. Okay. okay. So it depends on the which muscle is more active and mm. needs to be relaxed. Okay. Okay. So that's number one. Now, number two is, uh, for uh, say, for fillers. Okay. There are different techniques for fillers. Okay. We mm. have a set of protocol for uh, Botox. But mm. even that is individualized. Okay. Okay. For fillers, we give uh, we I have uh, several techniques. Say I do sometimes a bolus technique for uh, the nasal labial fold. Sometimes okay. I do a micro droplet techniques or a linear threading method. Okay. okay. Or sometimes I do a fanning or a cross hatching method. So there are okay. several techniques uh, advocated for this. And it, okay. these are all not my techniques. These are all in the literature which we sure. practice. Okay. So the only thing is the patient has to select a certified uh, cosmetologist who okay. is who has a real expertise in this field, who is really sure. experienced to address all this concern. Okay. All right. Yeah. The patient will not know as to. Uh, uh, these kind of techniques, which are a little bit scientific uh, uh, for them. Uh, so all they will be telling is, make me look good. Do the patients uh, come to you and uh, what do they what do they come and tell you? What do they come and ask you in your clinic? <laughs> it would be funny to hear all those things because yeah. uh, uh, they come up with a, a, a 60 year lady <laughs> will come up with a with an image of a 20 year girl and say, I want to make, Match me, I want you to make me like this, yeah, which that's is fine. really impossible. That's, yeah. that's an unrealistic expectation. Sure. So that, yeah, so that we, we always tell them, what is the realistic thing which we can do? How much you can expect out of this? Okay, so uh, we don't discourage them, but at the same time, we tell them the facts that only this much you can expect. OK, and we also tell them that this needs to be continued, not a one time procedure. So yeah. you have to main maintain this throughout. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. And yeah. you have to hydrate. You have to use a sunscreen throughout. You have to have an excellent diet, which I which I uh, prescribe them. OK, I, I also tell them about the cosmeceuticals, which we'll discuss in another uh, episode. OK, I also advise them about these cosmeceuticals the lasers, sometimes a combination of treatment which are required, not just sure. one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so do people come for like, um, uh, they are going to attend a ceremony, a marriage ceremony or something or that sort. Do they come to like for a one, uh, one shot of these kind of procedures or these are the patients who come for a regular kind of uh, uh, treatment with you? 
uh, there are several set of uh, patients. Some patients, uh, they just come up. You'll be, you'll be astonished to hear that. The previous day of marriage, I got a patient telling that I need Botox today. So it sure. means that they are not aware of the, 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 I mean, the action of the Botox because sure. Botox, the botulinum toxin usually takes three to four days to kick in. Okay. And it takes 10 to 14 days to give the full results. Sure. Say for fillers, at least it will show a, 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 not, a, not a significant amount, but at least to a little extent, it can show results after the procedure immediately. Okay. But on the long run, like say one week or two weeks, they'll get the results. So it's not ideal for a patient to come uh, just prior to an event and ask mm. for these kind of procedures. Sure. As we are planning for an occasion or an event, we mm. have to plan for these procedures too. As well. All right. Yeah. Okay. Now, a uh, uh, simple question. If um, fillers are going to give the effect for six months' time, whereas if uh, 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 Botox injection is going to give an effect only for three months' time, and considering Botox being a neurotoxin, whereas the filler being a neutral substance like hyaluronic acid, why should one go for a, a neurotoxin in contrast to a filler which is uh, more lasting and least uh, complicated one? Is that a, sens a sensible question or? Uh, see, yeah, yeah, I can understand. But uh, from a, uh, from a, if this question is from a layman uh, term, I mean view, I would say that uh, these are going to address different concerns because sure. as i said earlier botox is just going to relax your muscles that to at specific points okay. okay we cannot do botox throughout okay and we cannot do fillers where botox ought to be i mean are to be done so there are different indications for indications yeah only a cosmetologist can i mean assess and uh, tell you which can be done in which places and how much quantity to be done all right. Okay, uh, uh, Gopi, we were talking about the various injection techniques. Uh, now, with these uh, fillers and uh, neurotoxins that you are going to offer, are there any potential risks or complications that are associated with the procedure, please? Yeah, of course, there are risks and complications. Mm -hmm. There are minor complications, major, dreaded, drastic, and uh, disastrous complications as well. So really? I would always advise the patient to go. Uh, for an expert opinion, okay, only in okay. the hands of an expert, this would be a safe and effective procedure. Absolutely. So for Botox, the commonest uh, side effect which we see is asymmetry. So that's why all the Botox injectors, they say you come after 10 to 14 days for a retouch or retouch. Oh, okay. So that if there is any minor differences or asymmetry, that can be corrected. Mm. That's one thing. And the okay. common uh, things which we see are a spock eyebrow. That is like a devil's eyebrow. Ah, uh, okay. Spock, it's called, yeah, it's named after Dr. Spock, you know that. Oh, so, yeah. Spock's eyebrow. Uh, then uh, the, the another complication is the brotosis and eyelid ptosis. Okay, dropping of the eyelids. Yeah. Drooping, yeah. Drooping of the eyelids, which can be also corrected with certain eye medications, uh, topical medications. Sure. And uh, sometimes even injecting uh, low down into the zygomaticus can uh, lead to drooping of the mouth as well okay. and asymmetry of the mouth. Okay. okay. So these are the common complications with Botox. Okay. Say for fillers, erythema and edema, uh, little redness and swelling as a, okay. as a common, I uh, mean, for a layman term, I can say. Uh, edema and I mean swelling and redness are very common with fillers. Okay. Whereas there can be uh, major complications like vascular occlusion. If a, if a filler is injected inadvertently into a vessel, say into a blood vessel, this can lead to uh, what we call vascular occlusion, necrosis, gangrene. Okay. And even see here, if something happens wrong, okay, it can even lead to blindness. So there are there are medications like hyaluronidase, which can dilute this 
uh, filler. So right. we have safer options even to okay. counteract the side effects of fillers. But Botox right. fillers, I mean, Botox complications cannot be reversed usually. Right. Okay. These complications that you are mentioning, are they permanent complications or are they temporary complications? No, they are all temporary complications. Say, for example, a patient developed brotosis or eyelid ptosis, uh, sagging of the eyelids. This, this remained there for a period of two to three months. Exactly. And there are certain techniques which we cosmetologists advise then to revert back to normal. Mm. Okay. 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 Are there any uh, allergies or anything at all to these um, injections or to the fillers? Because we take into account those things also. Because if patient is allergic to any of the components of the fillers or Botox, hmm. it's an absolute contraindication to do these procedures. All right. We do okay. not do. And if patient has, say, infection, uh, say, localized herpes infection, we always hmm. give them a prophylactic of antiviral therapy before ah. doing these procedures. And ah. so the patient should stick on to the pre and the post of instructions given by the cosmetologist. All right. so we advise them to apply ice frequently, not sure. to massage the area, say for okay. Botox, not to bend down, look down for a period of, I mean, at least four hours, not okay. to lie flat for four hours, not to do vigorous strenuous exercises, on the day of uh, the procedure mm. and uh, not exposed to sunlight, do not drink coffee or hot liquids, do not smoke. Okay, all these are the post-op in instructions which we usually give. And if okay. there is any bruising or uh, bleeding, we advise them to also drink uh, pineapple juice because pineapple consists of a chemical called bromelain. This okay. is excellent in reducing the bruising. Ah, oh, all right. Okay, now uh, imagine I coming to your theater setup for having this one done. I, I understand you usually do this in an operation procedure or as, a, as an uh, no, no, it's OP, OP procedure. It's an it's OP operation procedure. procedure. So it's, you don't need to take it to the theater or anything at all. So, no. so what would I expect? Uh, I'm going to expect multiple jabs. Is it going to be painful for me? So what can I expect uh, from the procedure? Yeah, see, uh, if, if you are a first timer, uh, mm. things would be different. But if you are a regular client, things would be different. Sure. Okay. So anyway, with anesthesia, topical anesthesia, it's not going to bother much. Okay. Mm. Very minor pricks and okay. very little pain. Okay. Mm. In that and in the hands of an expert, this is I can say you'd be very much comfortable. Sure. And if patients are uh, really panicky or about about the needles, they have phobia. Say phobia of the needle, we yeah. use, uh, we can do with cannulas. We just mm. give anesthesia, local, uh, local anesthesia and do with cannulas. Very safe procedure. Right. Okay. So you can mitigate the, uh, the fear of that as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. And even so, nowadays we have uh, advanced uh, medication, uh, advanced fillers, I can say. Not advanced mm. fillers, a different non-hyaluronic acid fillers like uh, Calcium hydroxyapatite, PLLA, then yeah. EMSA. There are a lot of uh, semi permanent and permanent fillers. Okay. Uh, Nowadays available in the market. So you are stealing our projects. We used as a bone cement in our uh, total knee, total hip and spine, and etc. So you are taking our materials into your cosmetology stuff. Yeah, of course, of course. Because the effects are the same. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah, we need collagen stimulation as well. Uh, absolutely. So these are all permanent fillers, are they? So uh, uh, talking about that, so I'm sure uh, in the evolve uh, in the process of uh, evolving of the of cosmetology, uh, the the field of medicine, I'm sure there should be innovative and uh, uh, modern technologies that are available uh, uh, for these injections and etc. Are there anything that you would advise our uh, viewers about the evolving techniques? And uh, any modern uh, stuff that is available? See, uh, it's not it's not about the modern. It depends on the individual uh, requirements and how much they need and what they need. In fact, sure. So, okay. uh, so I I I would I always go for a, a combined liquid facelift. 
something called a liquid facelift, which combines, as I already said, this uh, neurotoxins, fillers, skin boosters, meso as well. Okay, okay. all this combined to give okay. a youthful appearance, reduction of the wrinkles, because these are all versatile agents which can be combined. Okay. To give right. a youthful appearance so that we can set the aging clock behind or back for a period okay. of five to ten years. Definitely. Right. But on a recurrent basis, you need to come every three to six months for this particular stuff. Yeah, yeah. But because uh, uh, recently, I, I think uh, um, uh, in the near future, we are expecting a Botox, I mean, botulinum toxin, which can last for six months to nine months. Ah, and we are also okay. expecting fillers, like a semi-permanent fillers, for a period of one year to two years. Right. Okay. Yeah. Ah, right. Okay. So, uh, in nutshell, uh, Dr. Gopi, yeah. uh, uh, from whatever we have discussed, you have given beautiful insights about a lot of stuff regarding uh, botulinum toxin and also the uh, fillers. Is there anything that you would uh, uh, let us know or if there are any myths that are uh, circulating in the uh, market? Do you want to squash those myths or do you want to let know our public about uh, in general, whatever the topics that we have missed here? Yeah, so you have, the, the, when you look into YouTube, uh, it's it's flooded with uh, what do you call the trout pout of the lips I have seen, right? So many, mm -hmm. the complication, they just so show the complications of uh, a lip filler, something which has gone wrong, which yeah. has disastrous and which mm -hmm. looks Awful. But the thing is, in the hands of an expert cosmetologist who is trained, mm. you are at safe hands, number one. Okay. Number two okay. is, and he will decide, okay, what exactly you want and what needs to be corrected sure. and not overcorrected. Yeah. Okay. So, because we people know how to make a harmonious proportion of all these things so that yeah. you will have that youthful appearance which you are opting for absolutely yeah that's fine yeah okay uh, are there any myths surrounding this cosmetology procedures at all in the uh, <laughs> that you want to squash it let the people uh, know that there is nothing if you can ask me i can i can counter it <laughs> uh, i haven't came across but uh, possibly okay so if there is nothing there then that's excellent actually uh, Dr. Gopikrishna, that is really... One, one thing is sure that people yeah. think that cosmetology is costly. No, it's cost okay. effective. Okay. okay. Mm. People think that cosmetology is only for the rich. No, it's even for the middle class and the lower class, socioeconomic strata. And uh, number three is people also think this is not at all safe and this is not good for anti-aging. I, I would definitely not watch for it because we see results directly on the table as well as uh, uh, during the progress of uh, these agents. So, right. so I would say that this taking these versatile agents like bot uh, botulinum toxin, neurotoxins, and the fillers are definitely going to have a positive impact on you and on the society. All right. Okay. Uh, Dr. Gopi, that was very nice of you to have offered your insights regarding this particular subject. Uh, we very much look forward to seeing you in many, many more topics in the very near future. So uh, thanks for participating with us, and I look forward to see you in the next uh, topic. Okay. Thank you so much. Good luck thanks. and God bless. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye.